Okay, welcome back. In this movie, I want to talk about some simple Ajax techniques. Now that we've done a little bit with jQuery, we know how to kind of roll with the framework, what a selector is, and, and how to bind that with an event and run functions within that. Okay, so now what I want to talk about are some Ajax techniques. Now, Ajax is a term that gets thrown around and misused quite a bit. A lot of people think it's a coding language, which it is not. Ajax is an acronym, and it stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And basically, the keyword here is asynchronous, and it allows you to... Remember when we saw the Twitter homepage? In fact, let's go pull that up right now. Um, we have a lot of content that's being brought in uh, dynamically without leaving the page. So that's what that is asynchronous JavaScript and XML is. Don't worry about the XML part of that just now. But you can see when new tweets come in, they kind of fade in and they, they're dynamically loaded into the page in quasi real time. These are top tweets, actually. They're tweets that get retweeted and things like that. Uh, up above that, we have the scrolling bar of trending topics and stuff like this. This is all dynamically generated content that's brought into the page without leaving the page. So we don't have to load a new page to get that content. It's just kind of streaming and brought in as we're talking. Remember the login was the same thing. If I go up here and click sign in and it dynamically loads a form. So let's talk about how to dynamically load external content. And uh, let's go back over real quick. Here's the jQuery homepage. And remember this documentation link here. This is, you're going to live here quite a bit. If I click on documentation and what we're going to do is look at the functions for Ajax. And here's our jQuery. And let's look over here on the right. I know this is a lot and, and it will get easier as we get into it. But what we're going to do is look at the jQuery API in reference. Okay, we have jQuery core. We've got all our information on selectors, which we've talked about a little bit. There's attributes, traversing, manipulation, CSS, so on and so forth. I'm going to go down here and select Ajax. Okay, we're going to click on there. And here's all the built-in jQuery Ajax functions, and there are a ton of them. There's a lot of events that get wrapped into uh, sometimes you need to send variables like when you do log in that needs to send that information off to the server so you would need an Ajax send or something like that what happens if there's an error what happens if something is sent back what happens if the user messes up so there's a lot of these we're going to use a real simple one though and it's almost towards the bottom it's about fifth up from the bottom it's just dot load okay and if I click on this you're going to get all the documentation for dot load and dot load can can take requests it can have a um, well, you can see here in the first example here, we have you know something with the the selector in which there's an ID, which is the pound symbol, so it's like CSS. A selector called result is going to load, and then we're going to put basically just a document inside some single quotes and parentheses, so that you can just put one argument into the uh, into the load parentheses there, and that would be what you want to load. It also uh, has room for a second one, which is optional, which is a secondary function, and it basically is. Going Going to tell you, you know, something that can fire or trigger once that load is complete. Okay, so it kind of has some built-in methods here for, for different things. Um, but what we're going to do is don't worry about that right now. I'm just going to show you how to do this. Okay, so what we're going to do is first of all we need to figure out what the event is. So when something's clicked on, so let's maybe take that first link. Okay, and let's go back over to the index.html. That first link here, link one. Let's change the name of this to external content. So we keep things clear for ourselves. You certainly don't have to do that, but and then remember the ID is link one. And so when that's clicked on, we're gonna we're gonna load in that external content. So let's go back over to the scripts and we're going to use that as the selector. So we're gonna use dollar sign in parentheses in single quotes, pound link one. So it only happens on link one. We're going to bind the click event. So when that's clicked, and then we need the open close parenthesis and then a semicolon. In between those parentheses, we're going to write our function. And I know you're getting tired of hearing me say this, but it really is when people have bugs, this is the first thing you need to check are the parentheses and the and the brackets, because they just there's a lot of them, they get confusing. So function, open and close parenthesis, open and close bracket. In between the brackets, you can drop a line, and this is where we're going to write our function. Now, uh, what we need to do is we need to use that load function, but where is it going to load? What's going to load? So let's go back over to index.html. And let's just take, oh, this first set of Greek down here. So we have a div with a class equals grid six. Let's give this an ID and let's just call it target. Okay, so that'll give us something to target. So let's go back to our scripts now. So now when link one is clicked, here's the function we're going to run. We're going to say dollar sign, open close parentheses, single quotes. We're going to say pound target. So in the target is going to load and in parentheses, 
followed by a semicolon. Now, what is the argument we give in the parentheses? It's going to be the document to load. Now, we don't have one yet, so let's make one. Let's go back up to the jQuery root here of this folder. Let's say new file, and let's just call this external content.html. And we'll do a paragraph in here. Let's see. And we'll write, hello, I am some external content. Okay, so let's save that file. Now let's go back to the scripts. And we are going to load that document. So I'm going to load the single quotes. And it's on. It, you're going to target this on the same directory as the page we're loaded into. So index.html is not inside a folder. It's just going to be external content. External, you must spell it right, content.html. Okay, so now what's going to happen is when link one is clicked, it's simply going to take that target div and it's going to replace all the content in there by loading this external content.html. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go back over and let's refresh the page. There's our external content link. Let's click on that. And there it is. Did you see it replace that that uh, the entire section of content with "Hello, I am some external content." So we can replace content on the page. I could have easily put an empty layer in there or an empty div tag and put it inside that. In fact, let's go do that. Um, let's just keep target and all the same. Let's go back to index, and I'm going to take this ID of target out of that div so we don't actually replace content. And let's go drop a line and we'll say uh, div. The class is going to be grid twelve. And let's give it an ID equals target. So now it won't replace it. We'll just add it in. Let's refresh the page, click external content, and there it is. You can see it dropped everything down, and hello, I am some external content. So you can easily put a form into this for a login. You could do uh, an image that's brought in dynamically. Uh, you can bring in anything externally. It's pretty cool. Um, one other thing I want to you know, make uh, clear here, too. When we go to that external content.html, notice I didn't put the entire HTML framework in here. I just put a paragraph tag with some content inside. You don't need. In fact, it's going to bring in everything from that file. So this could have easily been a text file. You don't need to have your framework set up because you already have one in. Remember, it's just bringing it into a page that's already there. So if you have a whole new header and all that, it can make things kind of mucky. So just remember that when you have external content, it can be, you know, without the framework, you can just have basically tags and text um, if you want. So anyway, that is more or less how we run a basic Ajax function using jQuery.